and welcome, welcome. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Mako, and today is our Wilder Myth Story 2, Episode 8. We've had a, a few a few things happen throughout the course so far of the story. We're in Chapter 2, of course, and let's see here. So it looks like we're going to be doing our thing here, here, and then going on to here. So... Might as well jump right into it. Of course, this is our legacy game. Our champion, Dwarglin, Tess, uh, Margloff, Linyan from our first story, and then Usalia from this story. I've been feeling a little bit under the weather uh, last week or so, I've been coughing <coughs> and stuff. I'm feeling a little bit better than I have been, so. Please, please forgive me if uh, I'm going to still try to do the voices, but please forgive me if it's not as good or, uh, you know, as it usually is. Okay, here we go. I would tell you how beautiful you look by firelight, but any light is lucky to land on you. Ooh, she going in hard. Mm. Look at the stars. It'd be more visible if we doused the fire. Stop mumbling or sound. Hushed voices and careful footfalls approach down the overgrown path. To our lost ears, even those muffled noises are perfectly loud. Come forward, strangers. If you're friendly, come forward slowly. Silence. Perhaps a minute is all the answer that emerges from the thick wall of brush. Then, turn, you dolt. You're not fooled by this. We can always offer money. Yes, mistress. Um, should I offer myself? Introduce us. We can do you? Oh, oh there. You look like experienced, whatever you are. Bandits? Rogues? Not hounding for captives, I hope. What good are more mouths to feed? <laughs> well then. Oh, move it, you fool. Why do I let you talk to people? Sorry, mistress. Here, take my arm. A pair of travelers clamber free of the bracken, their clothing fine, but a tad filthy. Hello, strangers, I'm Hearn, servant and apprentice to this prestigious and lovely woman who... Well, perhaps we shouldn't use your real name. That's Elwyn Wister. Oops, she knows your name. And why wouldn't she? Elwyn, the dream chanter, poet and peerless singer, impossible to turn it. Oh, way an ear when she's plucking strings, spinning yarns, deploying her famous vowels. Well, you don't seem like a threat. Come, sit by the fire. We're not in any kind of bad business, Morgan. Mistress? By the fire, sounds grand. The small camp settles a little awkwardly. Introductions go around. Shortly thereafter, Tess couldn't help herself. She bends Elwine's ear. I've lived my life according to stories, to plots, to great characters, the messages that lay nested, nested within, and you've been an inspiration to me, certainly. I was there when you sang Star Sailors in Leap, Leaping Field. Flawless, I heard about your rendition of Wadshan, spoken for an audience of craftspeople. Not a dry eye, they said. Yes, I... I remember those days. I try not to miss them. Oh, mistress, you needn't to say that. I do, though. Just that, nothing lasts forever. Bad fever took my lofty registers from me. My volume. Performance is such a physical thing. Most forget that. I'm weak nowadays. I lean on him, my student, her and there. Mistress. I would love to show that gift to you again, but it's gone now. Only the memory remains. Why 
why not try this a small song even if it's quiet even if it's just a shadow of you you'd like it let's see what you got L. Linewister, the dream champion, pulls her instrument from its case, a hum collects in her throat, then ebbs, then rises again, spilling between pitches, and stops. Don't strain yourself, mistress. It's a good night, I think. I may have a few verses in me. First she moves her fingers over the strings of the mandolin, great rings of sound, chords, and twining threads. The melody hangs and wobbles, the wind around me and winds around the ear. It curls in the heart like an old dog returning. My father wrote this for me. It was my first song. Next she begins to sing. I'm not gonna try to sing. <laughs> Her voice is sheer as gauze. It yields to the sight, slight sigh of a breeze, but it persists, trembling straw. It's beautiful. Suddenly, an unpleasant shriek closes her mouth. She swallows, appears to be fighting a cough. Unshed tears of st are star bright in the firelight. Are you okay? Mistress. But she shakes her head. Her fingers repair the halted too. That's, uh, that was my father's lullaby. You. My life, I know, has been blessed. The night before the fight at Bar on set quarry passes quietly. Hey, they last one. Nice. Okay, here we go. Okay, we all get plus two damage and potency. Ooh. Okay, can I hit them from here? No. Test him. Nice! Okay, Nargloth. Move you up here. Whoa. Oh, that's our mage. Cannot move quite as far as I was hoping, but Get the dart. nice. Drop him. <laughs> move old boy to here. Tag him in the guardian. Or up here. Okay. There we go. Good, she got the dodge. Uh, get the range guy. I think we'll move over to her. She'll just step in. Oh. He blocked. Got him, though. Okay, okay. I'm gonna need you to interfuse with that fire, buddy. There we go. Beach that over on the old boy. Of course he blocked fire damage. So why wouldn't he? Right, that guardian. Nice. Looks like they got themselves two more. out of range. There. I think we'll do it like that. Let them come to us. 
Very good. Nice. Yeah, we'll just move him straight in. Okay. And this should be it. There we go. Excellent. That's got that level up. Once we combat a switch action. We'll go with Rogue. Enjoy yourself, brothers. Put the phase back that way. You'll be doing the Yonderling lands a favor. Mind you, don't pick up any diseases. Nature can be all emergency and sense, I guess. Nargloff's part bird nowadays. <laughs> he, uh, he got the wolf transformation and the bird transformation in the same in, in the first campaign I had with him. Okay, so uh, we will go ahead and uh, we'll end this episode here. Thank you all very much for joining us, and I hope to see you in the next one. Have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day.